So this is unfortunately one of those heavy shows where I, where I have to do this sort of intro. The majority and or all of today's show is incredibly heavy for a number of reasons, which means that it is at a higher likelihood that YouTube is going to crack down on it, possibly suppress this video, and we end up not getting really important stories out to as many people as possible. So this is gonna be one of those few times a year where I ask you right at the top of the show, please share this video. It's really one of the only ways that we can combat how YouTube tends to crack down on these sorts of videos. But yeah, uh, with that said, no quirky or fun intro, let's actually just jump into it. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about today was one of the most requested stories from over the weekend, and that is the troubling and disturbing reason that Jake Paul is in the news. Because while yes, you may have seen Jake in the news because in the next few days, he's gonna be fighting retired MMA fighter Ben Askren, as well as a lot of headlines popping up, that trailer, which is a company that Jake Paul is invested in, is trying to sell a 30 second NFT of Paul knocking out Nate Robinson for $10 million. What has interestingly been overshadowed over the last week is that Jake Paul actually just got accused of sexually assaulting a woman back in the summer of 2019. Right? And the woman who goes by the name Justine Paradise on her social media channels posted a 20 minute video detailing her story on Friday. Right? And so she goes through this story about how they initially met through a mutual friend, they start texting, they flirt, on one occasion they kiss, but then, saying on another occasion, it went way, way, way over the line. As far as the details of this alleged incident, she said it kind of started out cute. He uh, grabbed her by the hand, he was walking with her. Jake Paul allegedly taking her to his room, which she said she didn't view as something that inherently meant that they were going to have sex. People have brought me to their room before and I'm their friend and they're literally just trying to show me their room or they just wanna talk to me away from the crowd of people or sometimes they are like trying to do something sexual, but if I say no, they respect it. With Justine claiming that once they got there, they were talking, then dancing, then kissing. He then took it to the bed, though. She really wanted to leave it just at kissing. Normally, everybody respects me when I don't want to do sexual things, so I thought that it was fine if I went in his room, and I thought it would be fine to kiss him, because I thought he would stop if I didn't want to do anything else. But here, Justine claims that Jake Paul then tried to touch her place to try to put her hands on other parts of him. With her claiming she kept moving his hands off so they could just keep it to kissing. But at one point she said he responded to this by saying, If nothing is going to happen, then what's the point? What's the point? I don't know, maybe I could be one of your friends. Maybe I can just be someone that you kiss. With Justine describing the situation in this moment as, This is the point where if what he wanted is sex, he sees he's not gonna get it. This is the point where we would just go elsewhere, you know, go back downstairs where everyone is. But uh, Justine says that is not what happened. That is not where the situation ends because she says that Jake Paul then got up, undid his pants and forced himself into her mouth to perform oral sex. But they're then going on to describe what, what feels like panic or shock. What am I supposed to do? He was literally, I was still laying down. He was on top of me and like holding my head like into him. Like I, I couldn't even tell him not to. He didn't ask for consent or anything. Like, he knew I didn't want to do anything with him because he said, if nothing's gonna happen, what's the point? And then he just shoves himself in me. After this allegedly happened, she says that she was confused, didn't know what to do. He, he was being kind of aggressive with her, telling her they needed to go back down to the studio with everyone else. She then goes on to say that she told her friend Michael what happened right away, with him saying that it was horrible and that he would say something to Jake. But they're then going on to say that she ended up spending the rest of the night there with her friends and showed a Snapchat she took while at the Team 10 house. In it, you can see the Calabasas location tag. Her face also appears to be puffy from crying. Also saying that after this, Jake never contacted her again, even though she also tried to reach out to him to talk about what happened. Also saying she wondered if he had no idea that what he did was wrong, which also appeared to be kind of connected to her, her general description of Jake Paul is that he doesn't know how to operate around people. She kind of paints this picture of him being the, this really awkward, socially unaware person. And that is ultimately kind of a, a slightly deeper than surface level description of the allegation. A link to the video down below, which as of right now only has about 300 thousand views on it, so it, she goes into more detail. Right now, the story is also kind of getting minimal coverage. I've seen uh, the Exerto, also Independent, release something about a day ago. Though you, you did also have creators like Ethan Klein and Trisha Paytas putting a spotlight on the story. Paytas specifically here tweeting, I'm glad victims are comfortable speaking up more and more. This disgusting behavior should be put on blast. Predators, rapists need appropriate punishments and not just being canceled temporarily and back on a pedestal the next month. And uh, as far as Jake Paul's, Side of this, we're really not hearing anything. He hasn't responded to the accusations himself. Uh, our team put out a request for comment. We have not heard back yet. If and when he or his team does, obviously we'll provide an update to the story because 
That's what we're trying to do here, cover a story. And as far as the public reaction to this, we, we've seen people somewhat divided depending on where you're looking. But if you look at her video, you have a lot of people thanking her for being brave, coming forward, sharing her story. But on the other side of this, if you go to Twitter, you can find people saying they think that she's lying, she's clout chasing, that she photoshopped the text. This is her way of getting back at Jake Paul because they did hook up, but then he stopped responding to her. But, you know, ultimately that is where this story is. You have uh, someone coming out, making accusations, the, the public responding, the accused not responding thus, Far. And for now, we'll have to wait and see what happens next. Though, I do want to pass the question, what are your thoughts with this situation in particular? Then, in very interesting business news, getting back to normal society news, slash I just needed one story today that wasn't a horror show news. Today, you had Uber saying that its ride requests for the month of March were the highest it has ever recorded in its 12 year history. In fact, according to a filing with the SEC last month, the company crossed a 30 billion annualized gross bookings run rate with average daily gross bookings up 9% month over month and notably this also marked the company's best month since March of last year when the pandemic closures began here in the United States. And on top of that side of the business, its delivery business crossed a $52 billion annualized gross bookings run rate in March, growing more than 150% year over year. In fact, the demand over the past month has been so high that Uber doesn't have enough drivers to meet it. With Uber saying as vaccination rates increase in the United States, we are observing that consumer demand for mobility is recovering faster than driver availability and consumer demand for delivery continues to exceed courier availability. And this news really seems to make sense of last week's news that Uber is opening up a $250 million driver stimulus to boost earnings for drivers. With Uber saying, we want drivers to take advantage of higher earnings now because this is likely a temporary situation. As the recovery continues, we expect more drivers will be hitting the road, which means that over time, earnings will come back to pre-COVID levels. But also, I will say Uber's business is in an odd place. Right, in February, Uber reported $6.8 billion in losses for 2020, and for years, many have actually questioned if its model is even profitable at all. However, in this latest filing, Uber says that it believes that it will become profitable by the end of 2021. Though, a lot of the, the future of their business will depend on legislation. But I mean, last month, for example, the UK Supreme Court handed drivers a major win by ruling that they need to be reclassified as workers, guaranteeing them minimum wage, holiday pay, and pension, which was massive news, especially following Uber's win in California back in November with Prop 22. But also, to be clear here, that the UK's classification of workers and employees is different. So those drivers aren't granted full benefits. So it is expected to be a setback for the company with Bank of America estimating that it could cost Uber more than $500 million. So if we started seeing other countries doing similar things, I mean, that could spell big trouble for Uber, which is likely part of the reason they fought so much and threw so much money at Prop 22 in California. But uh, yeah, a question I wanna connect to this story is, have you been using Ubers? When did you go back? Did you ever stop? For those who used to ride share but stopped, uh, when do you think that you would go back and feel comfortable? And we got a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life, so I'm just, I'm just interested. But uh, from that, I do wanna take a quick second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Raycon. Especially because without sponsors like Raycon, I can't make heavy shows like the show I'm making today. The kind that YouTube will potentially crack down on and or suppress. Founded by audio engineers and some of the music industry's elite, Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. They're just doing things differently than other brands out there and they prioritize their customer experience from start to fit in. And that's why Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring your favorite content with you wherever you go. I use mine all the time, whether I'm listening to podcasts, working out, and of course, Zoom calls, oh, Zoom calls. Not only do they look amazing, they're comfortable, sound great, and most importantly, they have a minimalist design, six hours of playing time, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and they're extremely compact, making for a comfortable noise isolating fit. And best of all, right now, Raycon is offering 15% off just for you. All you gotta do is go to buyraycon.com slash Franco, or just click that link in the description down below, and boom, you get 15% off your order today. And don't forget, they have a 45 day free return policy. So what are you waiting for? And then we should definitely talk about what happened in Minnesota. Right, so protests and violence broke out last night in Brooklyn Center, which is a suburb of Minneapolis, after police shot and killed a black man at a traffic stop just miles away from the courtroom where Derek Chauvin is facing murder charges for the death of George Floyd. Local officials confirming this morning that the man was 20-year-old Dante Wright, who had previously been identified by his family. Now, as far as what we know, in a press release yesterday, the Brooklyn Center Police Department said that officers had pulled his car over for a traffic violation around 2 p.m. and discovered that he had a warrant 
warrant out for his arrest. With him claiming that Wright tried to re-enter his car while they were trying to take him into custody, with one of the officers discharging their gun, hitting Dante with the release, saying that the car then traveled several blocks before striking another vehicle. According to police, officers and medical personnel attempted life-saving measures, but he was ultimately declared dead at the scene. Also, a female passenger who Dante's family identified as his girlfriend also sustained non-life-threatening injuries that was transported to the hospital. With police also saying that they believe that both body cameras and dash cameras were on during the incident and added that an investigation was underway. And on that note, just today we saw the police releasing some of the body cam footage during a press conference. And very notably during that conference, police chief Tim Gannon claimed that the officer who fatally shot Wright had actually meant to taser him. With him playing body cam footage that showed two officers approaching the vehicle from each side, a third officer then approaches later as the two try to handcuff Wright, who can be seen struggling. The third officer then repeats, taser, 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 before firing her weapon, which is not a taser. <laughs> Immediately after doing so, she can be heard saying, holy shit, I shot him. Holy shit! I shot him. Oh, wow. With Gannon also saying that the unidentified police officer had been placed on administrative leave, though other top officials, including Brooklyn Center Mayor Mike Elliott, said they support removing the officer from her duties. Also, during that press conference, Gannon claimed the police had initially stopped Wright because his registration had expired, but that account also appears to contradict the account from Wright's family. Right? Yesterday, Dante's mother, Katie Wright, told reporters that her son was driving a car his family had given him two weeks ago, and he called her when he was pulled over, saying he said they pulled him over because he had air fresheners hanging from his rear view mirror. With her also going on to say that she actually asked Dante to give his phone to the police officer so she could give them the insurance information. But adding, then I heard the police officer come to the window and say, put the phone down and get out of the car. After that, she said she heard scuffling and an officer telling Dante not to run, saying someone then hung up the phone and when she called back, her son's girlfriend answered and she said that he had been shot. Now, uh, after all this, according to local reports, hundreds of protesters gathered at the scene and initially peaceful demonstrations. Officers in riot gear responded to secure the area. People reportedly jumped on police cars, some throwing concrete blocks. You had police reportedly firing non-lethal rounds to try to disperse the crowd. Dante's mother calling for protesters to calm down over a loudspeaker. Protesters then regrouping later that night with hundreds reportedly marching to the Brooklyn Center Police Department headquarters. And again, the, the protests were initially peaceful, but uh, according to reports, around 9.30 p.m., police declared an unlawful assembly and gave people 10 minutes to disperse. And about 25 minutes later, they started firing less lethal rounds and flashbang grenades into the crowds that remained. With the standoff continuing to escalate through the night, with police reportedly firing rubber bullets and chemical agents at protests, protesters, some of whom threw rocks, bags of garbage, and water bottles back at them. You also had National Guard troops arriving just before midnight. Also, looters began targeting nearby stores, including a Walmart. According to reports, several businesses were completely destroyed and around 20 total were targeted. Mayor Elliott also ordered a curfew until 6 a.m. this morning. I mean, also we saw the local school superintendent say that the district would hold classes remotely out of an abundance of caution. And finally, here today you had the commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Public Safety saying that more National Guard troops will be deployed to this area this week. Where some were actually already stationed as part of a public safety plan put in place during the Chauvin trial. But that is where we are with this right now. Obviously, the situation is still developing and we're going to be keeping an eye on it. And then for our final story today, it actually centers around other police body cam footage from an incident that actually happened back in early December, but went viral over the weekend. Right, so with that footage, we see officers Joe Gutierrez and Daniel Crocker pulling over Karan Nazario, who is a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Medical Corps who pulls into a nearby gas station. Immediately, the two officers approach Nazario's car, guns drawn, yelling. How many occupants are in your vehicle? Open the door slowly and step out. Open the door. Lieutenant Nazario stays in his car. He can be heard repeatedly asking why he's been stopped while the officers continue to yell at him to get out of the car. Yo, what? guess what? I'm a veteran too. I learned to obey. Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. What's going on? You're fixing to ride the lightning, son. You then see both officers get closer to the vehicle where Nazario is sitting with his hands up, continuing to yell at him to get out of the car. You received our order. Obey it. I'm... I'm... Okay. I'm honestly afraid to get out. Get out. Yeah, you, you should be. Get out. What's get going out. On? Get out the car. Do? Get out now. I have not committed any crime. You're being stopped for a traffic violation. You're not cooperating at this point right now. You're under arrest for, traffic. for you're being detained, okay? You're being detained for obstruction of justice. Traffic violation. I do not have to get out the vehicle. You haven't even told really? me why I'm being stopped. Really? Get, your get, get out of the car now. Get out of the car. The two officers then try to get Nazario out of his car. He keeps asking what's going on, calmly asking them to not touch him, to please relax. Repeating that he did not do anything. And then we see this. This is not how you treat a vet. Uh, I'm actively serving this country, and this is how you're going to treat me. Back up, Daniel. I didn't do anything. Back up. 
Whoa, hold on. Daniel. What's going on? Hold on. I just watch it. Get out of the car! Get out of the car now! The officers keep yelling at Nazario to get out of the car. He says he's just trying to breathe. Gutierrez repeatedly saying he'll spray him again if he doesn't get out of the car. They then force him to the ground. They cuff him while he continues to ask why he's being treated like this. What's going on? Can you, can you talk to me about what's going on? Why am I being treated like this? Why? Because you're not cooperating. Get on the ground! Sorry, well, just, just work with me. Really, this is up. Sorry. And very notably here, after all of that, the police didn't arrest Nazario, nor did they file charges. Right, and so in the police report from that night, the officer said that they had pulled him over because his car did not have license plates. But there, according to a lawsuit filed earlier this month by Nazario, he had recently bought the car and was waiting for his plates. But he reportedly had the temporary ones taped in his rear window and they were visible. The lawsuit also saying that when police first pulled him over, there was nowhere for him to pull off safely. So he went to the gas station about a mile down the road that was well lit. And as far as Officer Gutierrez, it turns out he was actually fired after an internal investigation concluded he he had violated department policy. No, it didn't say if he had been fired before or after the incident gained widespread attention over the weekend. Though, we do know that town manager William Saunders told the Virginia pilot on Wednesday that both Gutierrez and his colleague, Officer Daniel Crocker, remained employed with the department at that time. But uh, ultimately, that is where we are with this story. We're gonna have to wait and see what happens next. And honestly, uh, that, that can be said about pretty much everything we talked about, which is why I'll say, whether it be this story or anything that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below because this, is the end of today's show. As always, thank you for watching my daily dives in the news, liking, subscribing, all the good stuff. If you're new here, definitely subscribe. I'm giving $5,000 to one lucky new subscriber for the month of April. But with that said, of course, as always, my name is Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.